Hello everyone, and welcome back to Theater Review, a series I fully wasn't really expecting to continue, but here we are. This time, I'm back in San Francisco and talking about the AMC Matreon 16 IMAX Theater. Now, normally I wouldn't care to talk about any old Megaplex, whether it be AMC, Regal, Cinemarks, or whatever. I have been to many AMC locations in the past, and I do think on a whole they're the best of the Megaplex chains in terms of the films they offer, with them being attached to Fathom events, and the quality of the locations. But this AMC is far more special than the rest. The AMC Metreon 16 is one of 30 theaters, not just in America, but worldwide, to meet the proper requirements and specifications for true 70mm IMAX. Not that Limax shit, where they pretend to be an IMAX, but really are hardly bigger than any regular DFX screen. This is a true IMAX theater, and it's also built into a Target of all places. I had tickets to see the new 4K IMAX re-release of the Talking Heads legendary concert film Stop Making Sense, brought back to life and on the big screen by A24, completely newly restored from the original camera negative, and it would be accompanied by a live stream Q&A afterward with the band back together, hosted by Spike Lee. So basically this gave me the excuse to record a quick little review of the theater since it was my first time visiting it. Now this theater is located straight in the middle of San Francisco's financial district, which led to the first problem since San Francisco is probably the worst city in the entire United States for driving. It's endless traffic, bad drivers all around, it's chaotic, there's pedestrians fucking everywhere. Most of these streets are up and down huge hills. The streets are so fucking thin, if you're in anything bigger than a Honda Civic, you better pray that your shit doesn't get scratched. And street parking is pretty much an impossibility here, so you gotta cough up some cash for a parking garage. Because if not, if you can even find a parking spot in the street in the first place, without a doubt your car will probably get broken into. So we found a garage, and from here, me and my family walked about two blocks until we got to the theater. Even though the Target kind of takes up most of it, I do like this giant AMC sign that overlooks this massive intersection. It gives the theater such like a grand sense of scale, kind of. Now into the theater, we walked through this strange, desolate lobby. I think this was supposed to be a lobby. It kind of reminded me of that opening subway station level from Silent Hill 4. The smashed poster frames by the entrance really set the tone. From here you maneuver up a maze of stairs and escalators all running side by side, slowly pushing you up the side of the building until you pop out and suddenly you're in the concessions area of the theater. It's kind of a trip. The concessions area is pretty spacious, and in terms of the food options, they offer everything you'd expect from a Megaplex. Pretzels, really low quality looking pizzas, hot dogs, lots of cancerous looking fried food. But it's all standard stuff for this type of theater. It, it ain't no Alamo Draft House, that's for sure. This whole concessions area has a very vibrant and colorful Art Deco inspired aesthetic to it. This big arch was really nice looking. It definitely adds to the mood and ambiance of the place and makes it seem a lot fancier than it really is, uh, which isn't a jab, I'm just kind of pointing it out. We headed to our IMAX auditorium. All the regular auditoriums are lined up down this one long ass hallway that stretches out so far, which is kind of funny. I felt like I was in the Overlook Hotel or something. I'd hate to have bought tickets for a movie and a theater all the way at the far end and have to walk a fucking quarter mile to get there. But we were here for the first auditorium that greets you when you walk up to the ticket checker spot. Now this is what makes the Metreon worth it. Walking down this hallway and into the theater, the insane size and scale of this theater completely washes over you. This screen is fucking massive. It towers over the audience completely and if you're sitting directly in the middle of the theater like I was, it's an insanely entrancing and immersive film-going experience. The sound is immaculate, booming and clear, and for a film that's entirely about the music, like Stop Making Sense is, it is the perfect quintessential way to experience this film. I also got to talk about this new Stop Making Sense restoration. I'd of course seen the film before at home on my TV on DVD a few years back, kickstarting my love for the Talking Heads, which then later became my favorite band. But seeing this new version of the film, especially on IMAX, it was transcendental. David Byrne lingers over you like a biblical figure, preaching at you, ranting at you, and bargaining with you through his music. 
He and the band commands every one of these images, and accompanied by Jonathan Dem's direction and Lisa Day's editing, let's just say it's considered the greatest concert film of all time for a reason. I heavily implore everyone to check it out in theaters while this re-release A24 is doing is still going on, because it's just an incredible movie-going experience, whether you're a fan of the band or you know nothing about them. I'm gonna make a full video essay on why Stop Making Sense is so great at some point, but for now, I'm just gonna say it's great. Really great. Just watch it. Afterward, there was a Q&A, which was an exclusive one-night-only thing for this day. This new restoration premiered at Toronto Film Festival, and simultaneously, the Q&A with the band was live-streamed to every IMAX theater across the nation. And boy, oh boy, unfortunately, it did leave a lot to be desired. Let me ask, I'm, I'm getting my years mixed up. What year did Prince's concert album come out? I'm trying to... Yeah, no, not... not. Sign, sign of the Times, Sign of the Times. Anybody know? So this was, was after. So, so that was like four years after this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Spike, my guy, I love your movies. Do the Right Thing, fucking classic. Clockers, such a banger. Malcolm X, ooh, what a what picture. What a picture. What a picture. Good, good picture, yeah. That'd be so much fun. But please never host another Q&A again. Spike's questions ranged from either confusing to somewhat nonsensical. He kept interjecting while the bandmates were talking. Nothing really interesting was asked of the band, and the bandmates didn't really seem crazily enthused to be there or anything. It was great seeing them all together, especially in contrast to how we saw them 40 years earlier in the film, but the whole thing just had a strange, awkward aura around it, and before it seemed like it was going in an interesting direction with some better fan questions that were being asked, it was hastily wrapped up. Yeah. All right, we have, you know what? We gotta wrap it up. Okay. okay. Ladies and gentlemen, get up for the talking heads. Now I'm getting sidetracked hard here. Was it supposed to be a theater review or something? I just wanted to bring that up. But of course, that all has nothing to do with both the qualities of the original film and the theater, which, yeah, that's that's what I was making the, the this video on. The seats as well in the auditorium were pretty comfortable. Way more comfortable than ones in most other IMAX auditoriums I've been in. Afterward, my family headed over to this really interesting restaurant located in Mission District, directly next to the new Mission Almo Draft House, called Foreign Cinema. It was a very beautiful location. It's a semi-outdoor restaurant, and they project a movie onto a wall while everyone eats. Tonight it was Baz Luhrmann's 90s Romeo and Juliet, and I forgot how much of an acid trip that film was. Yes, sir, but you lie! It also had a really nice art exhibit showcasing the movie posters throughout the 20s to 60s done by Ukrainian artist Mikhail O. Dlugak, and from there we left the city. As far as megaplexes go, the AMC Mitrion location is by far one of the better ones I've been to. With it being built into a massive target located underneath and only making up one floor out of the building, it can come across as somewhat soulless, but it has enough of its own flourishes to make it stand out a bit more and it's absolutely worth visiting for that IMAX screen. I can't really say it's a full-on destination location, like I would say the new Mission Alamo Draft House is, but if you're in the area, it's not bad. The Fathom Events tie-in is nice, so once in a while a classic film or a new restoration of an older film will get shown on the big screen. It's also really great during Oscar season, since AMC theaters always give the Best Picture nominees extended theatrical runs. They also do a yearly Studio Ghibli Fest where they show all the Ghibli classics for my fellow Miyazaki stands. I would potentially go again for that 70mm IMAX screen if another Oppenheimer type film comes around and demands that format, but otherwise I'd take the smaller screen but vastly more beautiful, luxurious venue and movie experience that the Alamo Draft House provides. But still, the Mitrion is nice enough. <laughs>